And today I want to talk about some of the precautionary measures that should be observed by mariners when navigating in very cold climates. It's part of the ice navigation, but even if it's very cold and there is no ice, but cold climates, and then some of the precautionary measures should be observed by the mariners. So in any area where air or sea temperatures are consistently cold and remain below freezing, possible for several days succession related problems must be anticipated. Various steps can be taken prior to entering the cold climates in order to reduce future damages due to cold weather. Firstly, terms of ballast. Air pipes and sounding pipes are often found to freeze up and anticipation of the problem especially if soundings change for no apparent reason could well highlight the problems developing within the tank. Any vessel which is approaching cold water climates from warm water or warm weather areas should consider taking on fresh ballast, for example from the Gulf Stream. It should be borne in mind that any tanks above the water line will be more likely to freeze than those tanks below the waterline. The reason behind this is the fact that tanks in a high position are exposed to the chill factor of the winds. In any event, it is always prudent action to pump out a few tons from each tank. This ensures that the air pipes are clear of water. However, the effect on free surface needs to be calculated, especially for high position tanks. Do not forget lifeboat water tanks or those may end up cracked and empty when reaching warmer latitudes. If free surface is of concern, consideration should be given to pumping tanks empty though this is not compatible with the idea of obtaining a deep draft when navigating in ice regions. The Canadian Coast Guard recommend that where possible, ballast should be recirculated where freezing conditions persist. Alternatively, the addition of salt or antifreeze to ballast may be considered as a viable option. Salt additions are cheaper but usually more corrosive than antifreeze and it would be a matter of experience and the length of stay within the region that could well influence the choice of which to use to prevent damaged tasks. In terms of machinery spaces, heat circulation on the main engine in extremely cold conditions is not unusual and boiler condition should be closely monitored. Specific areas are prone to damage, namely the steering gear compartment and could well require the use of a continuous heater to prevent cracking of packing in and around the stuffing box about the rudder stuck. Additionally, the use of a steam hose into any fresh tanks set against the ship's side could well prove useful and prevent damage long term. In terms of deck machinery, all water carrying pipelines should be drained prior to entering cold climates. If this is not possible, then continuous circulation should be considered. Steam pipes for such items as a steam windlass or cargo winches should be kept turning over at slow speed throughout the passage and especially overnight when not in use. Derrick screens or cargo grabs where sheaves are likely to freeze should be topped slowly and used at periodic intervals while hydraulic pumps for hatches etc should be kept operational under continuous running. Oil reservoir tanks could also benefit from the use of a portable heater overnight. In terms of navigational and personal problems, extreme cold will bring about the freezing and frosting of bridge windows together with any window washing arrangements. A high internal wheelhouse temperature will go some way to keeping windows clear. But the use of windows heaters in today's modernized ships perform the task with as lot more efficiency. 
These should be checked prior to entering the cold weather areas. The use of fan heaters directed towards windows and onto clear view motors could also prevent icing up. Navigation lights may also accumulate snow and ice on the outer glass. These may require some positive cleaning with spirit. Spare bulbs and fuses should be readily available to remedy simple faults occurring due to cold or moisture. Watchkeeping personnel should not be overexposed to extreme cold. Long periods on bridge wings or in an exposed lookout post will lend to fatigue and loss of attention. Lookouts need to be rotated at shorter intervals in order to maintain efficiency. They need to be adequately clothed and protected against the cold, if possible, maintained in a warm environment. Contingency actions for adverse weather should be put into operation before the temperature falls, when working becomes difficult. Rigging of lifelines to assist in providing full and complete access to all parts of the vessel should be rigged as standard. Rock salt needs to be stored in an accessible place to be used on steel decks, which can be expected to become slippery. Pipe lagging should be checked and replaced where appropriate and insulation position on or around sensitive equipment. Some of the useful stores for cold weather climates should be maintained as rock salt, electric fan heaters, which are portable, warm protective clothing, paraffin, axes, shovels, brushes, masking tape, antifreeze, protective gloves, steam hose lens and couplings as well as heat lamps. Thanks guys. Bye.